So let us just start the session. Um, today we are in our uh -huh. today we are in our fifth topic. So today we are in our fifth topic and um, I saw your work but I had not gone through it. So I'll go through it, I'll tell you by last week, by next week. And uh, next week I'm giving you a cut, cut one. Now. Okay. Okay, uh, nice so, uh, so utapata po cut one, you do it, it will just again be on this system. You do it. There's also to one everything it tafanya after cut. Thank you. So today we are on our fifth topic, and it is about stocks, sources, and soups. Stocks, sources, and soups. So we have gotten into the practical bit of this unit that is where we are going to prepare the stocks the sauces and the soups and the basic things we start with in the kitchen so we start with the definition of what is a stock and it is a liquid in which meat bones or vegetables have been simmered gently for a number of hours inside it a liquid in which meat bones all vegetables have been simmered in it for hours. So I guess you know what is meat, what is bones. Then when I talk about vegetables, we normally add vegetables that do not have strong flavors or scents. Kama carrot, viazi, a bit of celery, leek in them just to add flavor. The reason why we put bones and vegetable and meat is to add their nutritional value into that liquid. Then to simmer is normally to cook under low heat for a long period of time. The reason why we simmer in the kitchen is so that we can extract the nutritional content of that meat, bone or vegetable. Then leave it inside that liquid so that that is what will be used in the kitchen to prepare other dishes so it is a liquid in which meat bones or vegetables have been simmered gently they have been cooked for a very long period of time in a kwanga six hours basically to get that liquid that, that nutritious liquid known as a stock it is very important from it, from this stock, this is where we normally make sauces, we make gravies, and we even make soups in the kitchen. So, kisha tengeneza this flavor, this nutritious liquid from bones, you can either use bones, meat, or vegetables. Cook it na kwanga six to eight hours, then you get that nutritious liquid, which now will now be used to prepare soups, gravies and sauces in the kitchen so types of stock in the kitchen and we basically have two types of stocks in the kitchen it will either be a white stock or it will be a brown stock in place so the difference between a white stock and a brown stock ni white stock you just put all those your ingredients your bones vegetables with the water then you let it cook for six to eight hours but when you are doing a brown stock you will you will either brown the bones 
in a saucepan or you begin by browning them inside the oven. Ukizi brown kwa oven unazieka kwa baking sheet then you put them what unaeka po 180 to 200 degrees centigrade temperature of the oven then you put them inside there they will brown in color. Then you can now come and start preparing your brown stock. If not, you take a saucepan, uneka mafuta kidogo. Uneka mafuta kidogo, you brown them on one side, then kena unageuza on the other side. Then after that, now you start the procedure of making your stock. Your stock. So the outcome will be a brown stock. General rules for preparing stock. Number one, use fresh ingredients, fresh ingredients while preparing stock. So bones should be fresh, vegetables and meat should all be fresh. And if you want to use bones, remember bones can be recycled. Utaichemisha leo, ukisha maliza unaacha inapoa, unayurisha kwa karadasi, unayipeleka kwa freezer. Itafanya. You can use it even 10 times. That's when the whole nutritional liquid from the bones has been extracted. So use fresh ingredients when making stock. Number two, remember to remove excess fat and streaks of meat before using a bone. So a good stock should not have fat. Remember to remove excess fat and streaks of meat. Manya manya makubwa kubwa. Remove from the bone. Number three, simmer the stock for two to three hours. Then you add raw vegetables in case of white stock and continue simmering. So that means you will prepare, kama ni bones will come make up on danya manyama, you will simmer it for two to three hours. After that, that's when now you add the vegetables. You don't cook them all at a go. No. Next. Strain the stock and remove the vegetables. So, ikisha iba, you have to strain it and remove the vegetable. Next, if the stock is to be stored, cool it very quickly and put it inside a cold place. Next, do not sow the stock for more than, do not store, not sow, store for more than a few hours in a hot weather. And if there is a refrigerator, do not store it more than three days because bacteria can grow inside it. So if you prepare a stock right now and you don't have a refrigerator, use it within the first few hours. If you have a fridge, you are going to freeze it, let it be only for three days. Next, excess fat should be removed. Then keep on skimming. As the stock cooks, kuskim is the process ya kutoa mafuta. So you will come with your colander or your sieve. You keep on removing excess fat that is appearing on the stock. Then lastly, stock should not be seasoned, neither covered. So when you are preparing your stock, do not season it and do not cover it. To season is the process of adding in a condiment the I talked about in the previous class. You add condiments to enhance taste and flavor. You, it is going to be used to prepare the soups, the gravies, and the sauces, which can interfere with the taste of those soups, gravies, and sauces. So do not season a stock. Foodstuffs suitable for making stock include carrot, leek, celery, onions, bones. Also, the trimming of mushrooms or tomatoes can be added. So, carrot is normally a vegetable. Leek is a vegetable. Do you know leek? Do you know leek? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Then celery, then onions, mm, and uh, bones are the suitable items for making stocks. Food that are unsuitable for making stock include rice. Your rice will start thickening inside them. 
grains kama mahindi ndengu hizo potatoes green vegetable and cabbages though we have other basically tegenera stock those are the things that cannot be used but when you are doing soups they can be used the reason is that they normally become they normally make a cloudy color and change the taste of a stock from there we move to sauces so I have just finished a stock and the stock is normally a base, a very strong base in the kitchen for preparing sauces, gravies and soups. So a sauce is a well-flavored liquid, which is normally thickened by a root, arrowroot, corn flour, egg yolk, and even at times cream. All sauces should be smooth, glossy in appearance that means they should be shiny and they should have a definite taste and light in texture that is to say the thickening media should be used in moderation so a sauce is a well flavored liquid in the kitchen and it is normally an accompaniment to roasts and grilled foods they should not be thick but they should have a moderate consistency so that is where we have come into the different things that are normally used to thicken sauces and number one is aru aru is normally a combination of fat and flour cooked together at the ratio of one is to one so that means if you take one teaspoon of flour you add to one teaspoon of oil or fat mix it and cook it together and remember when you are preparing a roux if it is a white roux it should not change color it should remain white and like then blonde and the brown roux so a white roux it is used in bechamel sauce bechamel sauce is normally a white sauce in the kitchen which is made with the roux fat and flat the ratio of one is to one then you add the milk so white roux is used in making bechamel sauce the white sauce and soups it consists of equal quantities of margarine or butter and flour cooked together without coloring for a few minutes to a sandy texture so if you want to prepare the white roux the ratio of fat to flour should be ratio of one is to one you cook together and you should not let it brown basically the white roux sana sana we use it to make the cream or the green pea soup as the most common thing we use it in the kitchen then we have blonde roux it is used in tomato sauce and soups equal quantities of margarine and flour are cooked for a little longer than the white roux but without coloring to a sandy texture so this is again another roux in the kitchen it is used well for preparing the tomato sauce in the kitchen so tomato sauce pay is normally an accompaniment to a roast or a grill when you are serving a guest but remember you it does not also change the color then we have the brown sauce also known as the spaniola the brown roux it is used in soups and brown sauces and it is it consists of dripping and cooking the flour until it changes into a light brown color we are not allowed to over brown the flour so you just put the mixture together then so long as it has just attained a light brown color the roux is normally ready for the preparation of the brown sauces inside the kitchen the other thickening agent in the kitchen is usually known as the egg yolk which is normally used in the preparation of mayonnaise hollandaise and custard sauces 
in the kitchen. So we have mayonnaise sauce, a very important sauce in the kitchen. Uh, it is prepared by, you must have uh, uh, oil, then the egg yolks, then the mustard, vinegar. You mix those ones together, you normally obtain the mayonnaise sauce and you can also buy mayonnaise from the supermarket so we have the homemade mayonnaise we make ourselves in the kitchen as a very basic sauce in the kitchen you must know how to make it then now we have the one that is bought in the supermarket and we have rules it should not be exposed for a very long period of time because eggs are home of the staphylococci bacteria then we also have hollandaise sauce where we use the egg yolk to kichemusha to prepare a sauce in the kitchen and we have the custard sauce which is normally used as a dessert ukisha pick a cake when you want to serve a guest a cake there must be the custard sauce custard sauce now is a sweet sauce in the kitchen which is used in the dessert sections when we are taking the last meal Uses of sauces in the kitchen, it is used as an accompaniment to a dish, you know, in the summer, when roasts and grills have been prepared, roasted chicken or grilled beef, you must prepare a sauce as an accompaniment, the chakula is equally dry. So put it in your mind, when you prepare a roast or you grill meat, a sauce must be present, that is number one. Number two, it may be used to coat foods. Yes, we have some meals when we prepare, we coat them by the use of sauces, like the Mongolian beef. You coat it with it. Number three, it is used to form part of a dish. So a sauce may be used to form part of a dish, e.g. the fried foods or the stewed ones. Next. It is also used to bring out the flavor in food and adds color whenever. So remember when you are preparing a sauce again, you will add other spices and uh, herbs into it. That means you are going to incorporate another flavor to add sweetness to the dish that you are preparing. It is also, it may be used to moisten dry foods and improving the texture of the food, you may kwambia if it is grilled or roast, when a sauce is added there, it will improve the moisture of the food. Lastly, those sauces made of milk or egg also normally improve the food value of the meal. That one is in terms of nutrition. So milk is a source of calcium and other protein, same too eggs so don't forget we normally have basic sources in the kitchen which you are supposed to know kindly give me a minute So I was talking about basic sauces in the kitchen. And when you are asked about basic sauces in the kitchen, they will come in form of mayonnaise, hollandaise sauce, bechamel sauce, espanol, and the velute sauce. Those are the five basic sauces in the kitchen. Mayonnaise, hollandaise, bechamel, Espanol and the value sauce. Nani me kwambia how we make mayonnaise? We make it from egg yolk. Add vinegar into it, a little of, um, of mustard also to add color onto it. Mm. 
in place a very important source in the kitchen then so Apart from uh, mayonnaise, we normally have the hollandaise sauce, and it is normally a sauce that is normally used for or added to to grills or roasts in the kitchen, and uh, it is normally made by the use of pepper, vinegar, and egg yolks, which are whisked together until they become thick. Then at time, then you can add melted butter into it. Then you may compare what is bechamel sauce. You make a roux fat and flour, and it should not brown. It should remain white in color. Then you add milk into it. Then we have the Espanol sauce here. It is made from the brown roux and stock. And you simmer it for a very long period of time. And butter can be added into it. Then the last important sauce in the kitchen we normally have is the velute sauce, which is normally made from a white stock or a blonde roux. And it is normally made by the use of white fish, kama, white meat, kama ya veal, fish, chicken, or mutton and you can add cream or egg yolk to it so those are the five basic sauces in the kitchen that you must know as a food and beverage production personnel then we have soups it, it is a thickened or clear liquid made from variety of ingredients and usually served as a starter for meals a thickened liquid made of different ingredients and it is normally a starter the first food you give to somebody when somebody comes to dine in a place they're normally light in consistency and they normally require careful flavoring so that the flavor that you are going to use the herb that or spice you use should not be so strong Soups can also act as a snack for some people, and it is normally given at a, at a portion of 200 to 250 ml, depending on the type of soup. If there are those very thick soups that Genia Kikunu at Ashibaraka, it is advisable to give 200 ml. If there are those thin soups, you can give up to 250 ml. So remember, soups are derived from the stock that we have, we just began with when I was speaking. So they are very nutritious fluids, liquids when they are consumed. Uses of soups in the diet, they used to stimulate the digestive juices with its flavor. That is why after consuming a soup, you will have that urge to eat. Number two. It provides a hot start to a meal in a cold weather. Number three, it is used in invalid cookery to stimulate the appetite. Lastly, it provides food which does not require chewing. So tapata, most soups are, are already blended. So it will be, it will be very easy to akikunywa without chewing as you wait for the major meal to consume. And when I talk about uh, Number three, it is used in invalid cooking to stimulate the appetite. This is normally preparation of food for the sick people. An invalid cookery is the process of preparing food for the sick. 
So remember when you give them soups, soups because of the nutritional content that you are putting into that food, it can stimulate a patient's appetite. Number five, it provides a different way of using vegetables and scrap meat in the kitchen. Instead of throwing some vegetables and other parts of the meat that you may not require for cooking, you can dip them inside the soup. Then you will remove them later. Then we have it aids in digestion. So it helps in the digestion process. Then lastly, well-flavored hot soup that produces a well-being, that produce a feeling of well-being may also help to remove fatigue. For so some soups if are well prepared, they also help in removing fatigue from people. So we have different types of soups that we're just now moving into classification of soups. And they really help in different ways as follows classification of soups number one we have the clear soup the consomme soup it is made from a stock that is mixed with vegetable for flavor it is well it is a well flavored stock and garnishes and ingredients are added to it garnishes vary from julienne the brunoise vegetables shredded savory pancakes etc so basically this soup we normally make it with minced meat egg yolks are normally used there for clarification purposes so that this soup can come out very clear without this soup normally looks like water. It is supposed to come out as clear as water. So that is why we normally call it the clear soup. And the purpose of eggs when you are making the consomme soup is normally just to do the clarification purposes. So it is, they are made from mixed stock with little vegetables for flavor purposes. It is a well flavored stock with added garnishes and ingredients. A garnish is normally things that are added, like vegetables can be added to that soup. And the purpose of garnish is just to decorate a meal or a soup. Then garnishes vary from julienne. julienne it's a method of cutting vegetables. Bruno is always another method of cutting vegetables. Shredded savory pancake, that is pancake, then you just cut it, it into shreds. And that is what you'll use to make the consomme soup. So this soup basically is known as consomme soup. But when you add different things to it, it acquires a different name. Like when you prepare this consomme soup, then you add small strips of celery, onions, or leek into it. It is normally now termed as consomme button. That is when you add strips of celery, onions, or leek. Then you will prepare the same consomme. Then you add small dices of vegetables. Utayandika kwa menu as consomme brunoise. You will make the same thing consomme and add the strips or shreds of pancake. You will term it as consomme celestine. You will make it the same and add julienne of spinach. You will call, call it consomme florentine. Then lastly, we normally have consomme julienne, which you add the julienne cups on the consomme vegetable on the consomme soup so it is a very nice soup in the kitchen and you prepare it with a lot of carefulness and it will come as clear as water next we have that soup that is normally known as a broth and they are made from a thickened stock finely cut vegetable or fish or 
meat. They often contain a cereal like barley, rice, and due to the release of starch during cooking, they slightly thicken and clouds the soup. They have high nutritional value. So mtu akikuliza, what is a broth soup? You will say these are soups that are based on the stock, vegetable or meat or fish, etc. But basically, they are not unpassed. One pass ni kama kusivu. Everything that will be used to prepare this soup is normally left inside it. Then wao unapata sana sana tukimaliza you normally chop parsley finely chopped parsley and sprinkle inside there so nimesema you prepare it with the ingredients you have at hand and you never pass it ku parsley ku straight so broths are divided into two we have the sweated broth eg minestrone soup the leek soup and potato soup then we have the unsweated broth, which is the chicken broth and the mutton broth. To sweat, ni kuweka, mafu, kuweka mafuta kwa sufuria na kitungu kidogo, then unaacha inaiva kidogo, then you add the rest of the ingredient. From there, we will prepare the minestrone soup. Jua tunanza na mafuta, uneka kitungu, tunanza utongeza ginger, garlic, as you add those other ingredients, cabbage, the sausages, etc. Pole pole. But uh, the unsweated, just add the ingredients step by step without doing adding some oil to cook onions in place. Then we have puree as another classification of soup, and these ones we normally blend them. So these are soups. Where the main ingredients are usually vegetables, dried vegetables or pulses. Pulse ni kama ndengu, beans, sizoma grains. We normally call them pulses. So, it is a soup where main ingredients like vegetables, dried vegetables, pulses are cooked with the stock and then pureed and strained. Puree ni uneka kwa blender ni una press yo slot inaitua puree. Then it is blended, then you strain. When you are preparing puree soup, remember to add, to add an accompaniment. So soups also have accompaniments and the accompaniments to these soups are normally Accompaniments to these soups are normally croutons, bread rolls, flutes, etc. So my light, our lights are off. Give me a few minutes so that I can change and cope up with the situation.
kumenishika, what is a venue, it is a soup that is prepared with a vegetable as a base. That means a vegetable must be inside that soup when it is being prepared. Then the roux is also added to it, and it is normally finished with yolk and cream, the egg yolk and cream. Those ones are just thickening agents to the soup. And still, fish, poultry, or game can be added to the soup. So I hope when you monge below after you can just tell me the thickeners, the soup thickeners we have in the kitchen. So ni meonge about egg yolks are used to thicken soups in the kitchen, cream, ni mesema, ni mesema starches, kama potatoes, rice are used to thicken soups in the kitchen, a roux, vegetable puree. And let me continue badu taskia zingine. Apart from velute soup, we normally have cream soups. And uh, a cream soup is just soup that has, uh, once you prepare a soup, then you will add milk, yogurt, or cream to it. Once you add milk, yogurt, or cream, it, come, it changes from just being to say me, green pea soup, and it becomes cream of green pea soup. So it is a classical soup from puree made with addition of bechamel sauce and stock where the bechamel sauce will now act as a thickening agent the soup will be passed through a strainer and then it is finished with cream milk or yogurt e.g cream of vegetable soup cream of cauliflower cream of fresh pea cream of celery soup etc general points to be remembered when preparing soups, use a pot with a well-fitting lid to prevent evaporation and loss of flavor. So when we are preparing stock, how to make it But when we are preparing soups, we cover the saucepan so that the, the loss of flavor and the evaporation of the liquid does not occur. Number two, wash bones and meat put them in cold water and bring them slowly to boil. This draws out the flavor and mineral salt into the water. So you know the simmering process. Number three, cut out all the vegetables finely and add them to the water that has boiled. If you put before, they will lose flavor and taste. Next, Cook very slowly with a little heat, approximately two hours. Number five, for children or invalids, you have to strain the soup or beat with the wooden spoon until everything is finely mashed. Six, thicken soups using cornflour, cream, milk, or egg. Next, if eggs are used, do not boil the soup because the egg will curdle when it reaches at 60 degrees centigrade. Lastly, soup should be free from grease and it should have good color and correct proportions of ingredients used. Wait. Zima, you When serving soups, consider the following. Number one, quality. Number two, 150 ml of finished soup per person. Number three, variety. You are supposed to offer variety of soup. Next, do not repeat the flavor of the soup later in the meal. That means if your soup had uh, if your soup had uh, parsley as a flavor ingredient, do not add parsley into another dish there. The next thing you consider while serving soup is season of the year. 
that means we have seasonal vegetables so incorporate those seasonal vegetables into your soup lastly serve hot soups hot and in cold seasons in cold soups they're supposed to be chilled and you serve them during hot seasons Questions? Okay. Uh, I was asking. You have question. Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I was asking if you can, you can use contact as a beginning of the person. If you can use contla, I'm not. To become the soup. If you can use. Conflar, conflar. No, you ni unga ugali ya uwezi, but ungangano inaenza. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, I'm back. Hello. Thank you. 